Okay, thanks uh, everybody for joining. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm John Leslie, VP of Product and Agile Advisory at Favro. And today we're going to be covering how to track status and progress on multiple levels with status rollups and relations in Favro. So before I jump into the actual tool, um, let me just talk through what I'm going to be showing you. So essentially the holy grail of any collaboration, product management, project management tool is kind of to be able to do it all, right? So if you could set your high level goals and initiatives, do your road mapping, also do your product management, and also do your actual product development all in the same tool, wouldn't that be ideal? And that's one of the, the goals with Vavra, right? Is that single source of truth through your entire organization. That obviously consolidates tools. Uh, it makes it much easier for all levels of the organization to collaborate with one another, breaks through silos caused by multiple tools used by multiple teams or multiple levels of the organization. So a big way that Favro facilitates this is the ability to track status and progress at all levels of the organization. So I'm going to be showing you how do you track status at the team level? How do you track status at the teams of teams level or the program level or the product level, uh, whichever you choose to call it. And then also at the leadership level, essentially at the portfolio level where you're driving all your high level business goals and initiatives. And speaking of that, that's actually where we'll start. Also, just a little um, event maintenance. If you do have questions, feel free to type them into the chat. Uh, and at the end, we'll do our best to answer any questions you might have. Um, so now I'm sharing my screen. We're looking at this um, game leadership dashboard. So the example that I'm going to be showing you is from a game studio perspective. But keep in mind the status rollups and the relations that I'm going to be showing you tracking on multiple levels could be used in any business, in any organization. Um, but this, of course, is going to be from a game studio perspective. So starting here at, at kind of the, the highest level of your organization, right? At the, at the leadership level, we have a studio initiatives backlog. And this is, these are all the goals initiatives that are driving the actual business of running your game studio. And so those can be feeding the studio roadmap over here on, on your right, on this right hand panel. So it's essentially, you have, um, these high level initiatives. You're tracking them on, on a timeline. You can in turn switch this board and track them in a Kanban like this, broken down into lanes, going through the flow of everything that the leadership needs to do to get these initiatives to done. Now, these of course can break down, uh, into what the teams are actually going to take action and execute against. And we'll get to that in a second. So switching this back to a timeline view, which is typically how people per prefer to view their roadmaps. The idea is that you simply drag and drop in a new initiative like this into the timeline and sets, set the dates accordingly. Now you might want to show dependencies like this, and it's that simple. Now. I'm going to be focused on the shadow recon live service game example, and that's being driven not by the studio initiatives backlog, but by an actual, the actual game backlog, the actual product backlog for that game. So here you can see at the highest level, what are the pillars? What are the epics? Essentially, what are the things that are going to drive this game, make it different, make it successful. So we have two sample epics here, combat mechanics and stealth mechanics. And you can see that those have both been added to this studio roadmap, giving a, a high level view into the progress of the development of this actual game. So these are broken down. So this is how they track at this level. And, and please, um, take note of where these both sit 
from a status standpoint in this roadmap. So you can see that combat mechanics is currently in progress. Stealth mechanics is also currently in progress. And if I switch back to the Kanban view, you can see in this shadow recon swim lane that in, of course, they're both in progress here as well. So through the magic of automations, this is going to change based on what happens at the team level and also at the product level. So keep in mind where those are at. So when we do go down to say the producer dashboard level, which is an aggregation of multiple teams, all of the teams that it takes to actually build this title, maybe multiple feature teams, maybe multiple art teams, live ops teams, uh, community teams, marketing teams, so on and so forth. So especially in a live service environment, as you all know, the work in that type of field, right, with those type of games, it takes multiple functions, multiple teams to ultimately deliver that value to the players on an ongoing basis. So here you can see combat mechanics, for example, this is the same feature backlog that is in that studio leadership dashboard collection, right? It's just shared across multiple collections, which, which is one of the unique abilities of Favro. You can see that combat mechanics has been broken down into two features, right? So this uh, P versus PVE mode and a heavy weapons feature. So to give myself a little room, I'll just minimize this. And you can see that both of these now at the feature level are flowing through this Shadow Rock Recon feature roadmap and producer flow. And you can see that these both from a feature standpoint are currently at building. And I can also toggle this to a timeline view and view this as a proper roadmap as well. Now at the feature level. Now, going down to the team level, the teams that are actually building this, these, these features and ultimately these completing these epics, we'll go to this feature team collection. Again, it's the same shared feature backlog that exists here, also exists at the studio leadership level and that producer dashboard teams of teams level. And here we've broken it down further. Right, so both of these features have been broken down into the actual achievable, maybe within a single sprint or iteration, um, user stories. So these user stories are flowing through a single feature team, maybe even multiple feature teams working out of the same backlog if it's a very large game, through to completion, from sprint to sprint to sprint, from iteration to iteration, or maybe they're working as a continuous flow Kanban or Scrumban team. Doesn't really matter, Favro can handle all of those different ways of working at the team level. So we can see here, right, that this epic is in progress, this feature is also in progress, and it's been broken down into these individual smaller components. And if we look at maybe something like estimation or any numeric, you can see how that very uniquely rolls up through that visual hierarchy in the Favro backlog. So what we've done here is we've actually created parent-child relationships. So anytime you break something down, you create a parent-child relationship. So this is the parent. These are all the children. This would actually be essentially the grandparent of these children, combat mechanics, this epic. To do that, it's very simple. You just indent uh, and create that structure in the backlog. The other way, if you choose to, if you don't choose to do it this way, the other way to create parent-child relationships is to say, take something big like this feature and break down this very large feature to its own board. You can break that down to uh, a backlog template. You can break that down to just a, a sheet view on the fly, however you choose to do it. And that's another way that creates a parent-child relationship. So this would be the parent. All the cards that exist on this broken down board would be the children. Now here, as you can see, right, we have this one relations column and we have this one status column. Keep your eye on this as I move these cards. So we'll start with this environmental damage, moving that to the done, essentially deployed and live. And you can see that thanks to the relations column, it automatically shows us the actual status on the team board. And thanks to an automation, 
it's thinking that's the overall global status, if you will, um, to done back here in the backlog. Now we'll do that for both of the, the PVE mode user stories that have been committed to this team, to this sprint. You can see they're both done. Now the actual feature is still in progress, right? Because there's one more user story that needs to be completed. And this is kind of showing off how it takes multiple teams to complete a feature or deliver a feature to the ultimate player. And here, this PVE launch trailer is actually being worked on by a marketing team. And if I scroll over here to this marketing relations column, you can see that it's currently still in their sprint backlog. I can see their entire status flow from here too, or, or Kanban flow from here too. Now, if I go over to that marketing team's board or collection, and we move this through their flow, ultimately to done, completing that trailer, you can see it updated back here in the producer dashboard thanks to an automation. That PVE launch trailer is done. You can see that on the team board thanks to the relation column here. And the global status is also synced back to done. And since all three of these user stories in this very simple example have been completed, it also automatically completed the feature level PVE mode up here. And it also automatically moved that card from building on this feature roadmap at the producer level, teams of teams level, from building to producer review. So marked it with a little notification, notifying the producer automatically out of the producer saying, this is ready for you to take a look at. All of the user stories necessary to complete this feature have been completed. It's now a game and it's time for you to take a look at. You can even take a look at the, the launch trailer to approve everything for ultimate release. So that's at this level, right? You can see how that automation rolls up to the feature level, to the product level, if you will. Now let's complete the actual overall epic. So to do that, we'll go back to the feature team level and we have two more user stories in progress driving this heavy weapons feature which is the last feature in this epic and we'll complete those and you can see that rolled all the way up right so both all the user stories are done both features are done and automatically completes the epic which drives back up at the studio leadership dashboard, which drives this from in progress, combat mechanics is now completed, right? Drives this all the way up to the leadership level, uh, maybe executive producers or, or general manager of the studio to leadership review, ready for leadership review. And you can also see that on their Kanban flow here, move the card from in progress to leadership review. So kind of magic, right? I mean, it's a single tool allowing you to drive overall high level initiatives from here at the leadership level, breaking down to features at the teams of teams, product, program, whatever you want to call it, producer level, and ultimately driving down to the team level, whether it's marketing team, live ops teams, art teams, uh, however many teams it takes to actually complete these features and deliver these features to the players. So how does this work? Okay, so the very first thing, how, how did I build this? Um, so the very first thing is relations. Now, you can, you can get away with a lot just by using relations, and relations are incredibly easy to use. So directly on the cards themselves, so if I open up um, PVE mode here, for example, this is a good one because it's right in the middle. It has a parent of its own and it also has children. So I can see on this relations panel here at the top of every card, um, I can see the parent is combat mechanics and this PVE mode breaks down into these individual user stories. I can even see the status of those user stories directly on the card itself like this. Super cool. Now, 
to see those same relational statuses, how are these being completed by the teams in the backlog, right? All I have to do is add what's called a relations column. So to do that, like this one, which is essentially just the pointer back to the board status of the team that's actually working on it. In this case, this feature team. So to do that, you just go over here to the plus, easiest way to do it, add a relations column, maybe just create a generic one that points to all the places that card exists, right? And then you just want to filter it down to the team that you, you're actually concerned with who's actually doing the work. So we'll filter this down to just that feature team's board, and there you have it, right? So now as these move, you're able to see that status represented automatically without doing anything, right? And this could even be across multiple teams if you have multiple feature teams working again under the same product backlog. It's that simple to create a relations column. And I just did the same thing for this marketing team. Now this is cool too, because with this, these relations columns active, say for example, one of these um, needed some marketing attention, right? So for this RPG, you wanted to do a teaser trailer, maybe for the RPG, you could literally just add that same card, even representing that RPG to that team's board, the marketing team's board or backlog, just simply by clicking the relations calling and clicking add to board here, ad hoc. So that's tracking um, automatically, right? At the feature level, individual, sorry, user story level at the team level, just by using the relations column. Now, if you do want to sync across you know, multiple levels, then you're going to have some sort of global status like this, right? And that needs to be synced based on what's happening here. And to do that, it's very simple. It's only a couple of automations needed on the team board. And it could literally just be done here. So you can say when something reaches deployed and live, right, we want to sync back to the sit the status of the same card in that feature backlog to the corresponding status, which is done. And just to keep it clean in case things do move back and forth, right, uh, in your Kanban flow, I've also synced the other statuses. So doing on this team board is synced to in progress in that feature backlog. And the sprint backlog is synced to essentially not started in that feature backlog. And it's just those three simple automations to keep those two boards in sync from a global status standpoint. Now to drive up the chain, right? Another very simple automation, which takes place back here in the back, back here in the backlog. And you essentially just need one, right? That says when all cards are in status done, I want the direct children of the parent, in this case, those user stories, when all of those are done, I want the parent card, which in this case would be either the feature or even the epic, the grandparent. I want to change that to done too. So when all the children are completed, just roll it up and also complete the parent. And if, you know, if all the features are done, then complete the grandparent, which is the epic in this example. And this one automation handles all of that. So keep in mind that automations can stack right? So they can trigger each other. So once all of these are moved to done here, it triggers um, this to move done here, for example, the parent, which can in turn trigger an automation like this, that basically says when that feature moves to done based on its children being completed on the team board, then also change the status of that feature on the producer level, on that feature roadmap that's sitting in the producer collection to produce a review. The same stacked automation can be used to say, now when all of the features are completed, I want to change the st and the ch status of the epic automatically changes to done, then I want the status of that epic to also be reflected and move automatically move on the studio roadmap and that leadership collection to ready for leadership review. And that's what this automation does. And it's literally that simple. It's 
three automations here on the team board and three automations here on the actual product backlog to drive from the team level to the teams of teams level all the way up to the leadership portfolio level. And again, creating those multiple relations columns is super easy. So to create another one that maybe shows the status relative to the producer collection and also to the leadership collection, I can just click here, add another relation. I'll actually add two. This is the quickest way to do it, by the way, nice shortcut. Just click here, say we want to see, okay, where does this sit on the producer roadmap or dashboard? And for this feature level, and we'll click here, find that the one we're looking for, producer dashboard, filter down to that. So we can see this is now our producer review. So we can track now here too, once this moves on to other stages at the producer flow, level flow. And this one, we want to track the leadership status of these epics. So we'll filter down here like this. And now we're tracking, right? We can see what's going on um, at the producer level with the features and what's going on at the leadership level with the epics and even see when this changes from their perspective. So when leadership is signed off on essentially, you'll see that automatically here now. So it basically allows you to see what's happening further down the chain in the organization and also further up the chain, as you just see here with using these relations. Okay, and that's uh, it. We have um, about eight minutes left and we'll see if we have uh, any questions. Yep, John, so we actually do have, and there's a good question. Uh, what are the advantages of breaking down a parent card to a new board versus uh, indenting on the current board? Is it just for aesthetics? So there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, a lot of teams that are used to working with, you know, traditional uh, product project management tools like the ability to see the visual hierarchy like this um, with epics broken down into features, broken down into user stories, whatever terminology, whatever terminology you choose. Fevro doesn't dictate that terminology. You get to set that yourself, maybe using a custom field like this called card type, for example. Um, so it's nice to see these rollups, including points, maybe budgets, whatever the case may be, any numerics automatically roll up when you do it like this. Now, uh, an advantage to doing it the other way is it creates more granularity, right? So if I take, um, say you have an entire squad or team or teams of teams working on just combat mechanics, say it's a very large game and you didn't want them to you know, have to worry about the overall maybe massive product backlog, you could divvy it up. So instead of breaking it down here in this, what could turn into a huge backlog, right? Keep it more focused and take combat mechanics, break it down to its own board. I'll just do one from scratch like this. And then now we'll create those children or you know, for the sake of example, I'll just copy some of them here. Like this. And so just pretend it wasn't broken down here. Instead, the breakdown happens here. And so those same automations can be used that I showed you. Uh, now, just in a more granular way. So combat mechanics has been broken down. It's tied to this, as you can see here with this link icon. Now you've created that parent, same ch parent child relationship. As these are completed, it can drive the status of the overall combat mechanics up here. And it's that same automation down here in this broken down board that would drive that saying when all cards are in status done. You want to change the status of other cards. The parent back in that product backlog. 
So it's the same thing. It's just a different way to create those parent-child relationships. And this can now be shared more granular in a more granular way out to the individual teams who only need to see and are only working on maybe combat mechanics, which is in turn driving the overall larger uh, master, if you will, product backlog. So to add those to another collection, super simple. You just go to more, add or move to collection, and now I could share this with the individual team or teams that are working on just combat mechanics to keep them more focused, not overwhelm them with this maybe massive product backlog. So smaller product backlogs in general are a good practice, and this helps facilitate that. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, and last one. Um, I think you might have uh, covered this a bit, but uh, maybe just to uh, finish up at the end. The question is, if I have a card dependent on multiple teams, assume I have a main status of the cards and then other statuses for teams as well. How can we make the main status done when all teams have completed their statuses? Okay, so that example I have here So here, for example, we have multiple, say you have multiple teams working on the same, uh, the same f feature, for example, or the same user story like this one. So you've got a development team, you've got a live ops team and this, in this particular example, you also have a marketing team. So you have three relational columns pointing to, um, all of those pointing to all of the places where this, this card exists, take cover behind objects, right? Now, uh, as it stands right now, there's no way to say when all of these are done in any particular order, automatically change maybe the backlog status, which you can consider as the global status to also done. What you'd basically have to determine is who is the last team to probably touch this, right? And and you'll probably pretty easily be able to t determine that, right? Um, in a lot of cases, it's maybe gonna be a QA team, a centralized QA team, or it's gonna be a marketing team. And so when their relational status here is done, that would be the trigger to in turn complete the overall status back in the backlog. But to be honest, a lot of teams don't don't necessarily even need that. They'll just visually see, okay, this is done, this is done, and this is done. So this is overall done. If all of these are in that same relational status, then you could maybe even just manually change the status of the parent, in this case, combat mechanics. Um, it, it's in certain examples like this, right? Maybe it's not necessary to automate everything. Um, but you can do it to a certain extent based on figuring out who the last team to maybe touch it and work on this each feature is going to be and create the automation there to drive the overall global status. Now, um, there is a an epic that Favreau is about to start working on called, a little bit of a, a teaser, right, um, is a, a global status epic where we will be able to have a shared workflow across multiple boards and a shared global status across all of those boards. So in that case, you'll probably be more likely to, to do what it is you're, you're trying to do. Um, the problem with that though, there's always trade-offs, right? Is you're going to lose some of the flexibility. You'll, you'll lock down each one of the teams across those multiple boards to the same status and essentially the same flow. Uh, so there is going to be a trade-off there, but you will be able to do that once that Favreau Epic is completed. Any other questions? That's it. Okay, perfect. We're exactly at our uh, scheduled end time. So thank you everybody for joining. And this uh, recording of this will be posted uh, on the Favreau website within a few days. Thanks again. Bye-bye.